on the radio yet. Okay, let him get set up. Yes, the official point. Welcome to the Myers Jewelers Radio Show. And it's called the Myers Jewelers Experience, by the way. I'm Jeff. That's Jim. Rachel's looking sexy as always behind me. Well, I guess that's fine. I was going to say something. I really thought you were going to say I also was looking sexy as always. <laughs> no. That's hurtful. Jeff. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm so glad you're here today. I got some, Me too. I got some compliments with people saying Whoa. that they watched this show. Not me personally. It was really about you. That they watched this show and they're upset that we don't wave back when the, when the little thing on Facebook Oh, okay. Comments. So we're going to try to pay attention Well, I can to never that. read that or see. I'm going to leave that up to you. Yeah, that's why I put a little That's why you get paid up. the big dollars. That's right. Um, but the exciting part about this So tell this me weekend, when somebody asks a question oh, or something, we should answer it. I do have to say, Joe Clark, I did acknowledge you. Joe Clark, Grove City alumni, class of 98. Whoa, that was a good class. Yeah. Or no, is he 99? It doesn't matter. That was a good class. Both good classes and good customers of yours. Yes, the reason I bring that up is it's Alumni Weekend in Grove City. Yes, the big weekend. The biggest alumni event in the entire country. Yes, and I'm it not is. just making that up. Yeah, it's great. But one of the things that I was curious about is all these people come back. It's not mm. just the weekend. It's an entire week. This full. is their big week. They come back to party in Grove City with all their old friends. Now, don't you see a lot of these people, like these, you've had customers. I'll tell you somebody that comes back, but it's it's either at this time of year or Christmas. Uh, the guy that runs the head office of minor league baseball, Pat, I can't, he's a Grove City alum. I always see him at Christmas time in your store, and I think he actually comes back. Pat Connor, or Connors. Pat Connors. He would be an older gentleman, not the class of 1994, but he has been a customer, and he buys things for his mom at Christmas time. Oh, very nice. But I think he comes back at this time of year, too. Um, well, I hope we see him. Yeah. And I'll be glad to show him anything. So is it kind of like uh, when Alumni Week is happening or the weekend, is it like an OSU football game where everybody's just gone? Are you guys actually busy? Uh, we're, uh, it's it's already started, so it's this weekend, right? Or is it, it is. Don't pretend like you don't know the greatest thing that's ever happened to the <laughs> Grove City. Uh, it, it, I well, am focused on one thing and one thing this weekend only. Oh, I know. We're going to get to that because I So, can't, I'm sorry. I can't let go of what you've been doing to me since Saturday evening. But my curiosity is, all these people come back to town, do you see a lot of the same faces kind of coming We were in? busy uh, all day today, so it's got to be uh, a good reason. I believe they say the population of Grove City goes up about 30% just for this week. <laughs> oh, and once it hits I'm about excited Monday, for that. Yeah, once it hits Monday, everybody goes back home unless there's a rain out, but... Um, I just, I've never been in the store because I've always been playing in the tournament, so I didn't know. And are you what, playing this year? Of course, look at me. I'm in game ready shape. That's I true. I can play right now. I mean, I'm not because my knee is a little bu uh, buggy, but I will be playing. And class of 94, I'm already going to give this shout out. We're going to lose our two games and we'll be back by the tents barbecuing and oh, drinking beer. So fun. come see us. Go Greyhounds. That's right. Yeah. But when you see these people that are coming back, uh, into town, is it just is it good to see those old faces? Because you have your what you like to call your regulars that come in from yes. the old store on the west side on South High. Yep. But when you're seeing these people, is it kind of like the same time of year you're seeing them kind of pop up? Um, it's a good question. I don't know. <laughs> no. Yeah. No. I mean, we have we have a lot of folks to come in. So. Uh, it's it, it, unfortunately it's hard to decipher who's oh, in town it, from it, right. who isn't, because you know it's not like people come into the jewelry store every day or every week the same thing. Right. You know, you'll come in a couple times a year, whatever, and it's hard to remember. You know, because we'll we have over we average over a hundred people a day walking in there. So that is a lot of uh, and faces. And that's at any given time, because I know at Christmas That's just time, during, yeah, you know, that's during the off times, right. not Christmas. Christmas, it's over a 1,000 a day. So it gets, um, yeah, it's hard to kind of judge all that. And anymore with the way the retail world is, there's no rhyme or reason why one day you have 200 people, another day you have 40 people. Right. It is, it just it just happens, and there's no rhyme or reason to it. 
And no matter what you do, right? Because you can't, even if you're having like a bridal sale this weekend only, you're, that's going to ramp things up. But you might be busy on the, the Tuesday before that hits. For exactly. No for no reason. You just don't know. So it's, uh, it's interesting. How do you that. balance that out, though? Because you're going to have this, like I was in a store, I want to say it was like two or three weeks ago, and there was a flood of people around, I think it was like two, yeah, it was two o'clock. I was there early. And I thought, where did they all come from? And yet, maybe the next day at five o'clock, there might be, you know, 10 people in the store. Exactly. There, again, there's no way to know or plan or tell why you're busy one day and why you're not. Um, yeah, sometimes why you're not, horrible weather, obvious, an obvious thing. We'll uh, tell you a little bit about maybe you're going to be a little slower. But that could also mean good, like in the summer, a beautiful day like today. I'm not thinking about going shopping. Right. I'm thinking if I'm not going to be working, I'm golfing or biking or doing something outside. Right. But if it's raining and you're not working, let's go shopping. But if it's raining too much... And maybe we don't want to go out in the horrible storm. In the monsoon. Right. So, yeah, it's hard to say. Rachel, you got any input on this very interesting subject? Mm -mm. I'm homebody, so. Your, your uh, input would be home. change the subject, correct? Yeah. <laughs> no. No, I, again, I was just curious because, yes. um, you know, this time of year, it does seem like, I, I keep seeing these, these stories about retail stores hurting because of online purchasing, but we've talked about this. You can't buy a ring. You can, without... but it is. Uh, got, we had. A, I had a lady in. Oh my gosh, this was unbelievable. I had a lady in. Maybe. Oh yeah, it was. Early, it was early in the week. I think it was probably around Monday, and uh, she bought something online, and came in to have me look it over, and it was the worst diamond I had ever seen in my entire life. It was off. It was a two-carat pear shape, rose cut, which means it is cut like it was from the 1800s. And they called them, um, oh, what the hell? Gosh, I can't remember the name. Uh, there's a certain name because it is loaded with black carbon. And it's kind of a dark stone to start with and it, it, it's a diamond and it's just loaded with black you just see it all through it and this website so i asked her what the website name was we went on to take a look and they romance it like it is fit for the queen of england mm -hmm. and it's a beautiful website and they fell for it got the ring and the mounting they tell them it's a handmade you know created for just for you mounting and the mounting looks like it was made in a preschool. I mean, it was the worst mounting I'd ever seen. And I was then I finally said, well, what'd you pay for this? I was expecting her to say, you know, $500, something like that. $4,000. I couldn't believe it. Online. Bought something for $4,000 online. Online. Never saw it. Went by the pictures. And it kind of looks like the pictures, but they do a big story and romance how this is a rare stone it's not rare and it was literally the worst someone to buy that stone. <laughs> it was the worst diamond i had ever seen and they spent four thousand dollars and got totally ripped but they didn't get ripped because they saw a picture and they were showed the picture of what she got right so it wasn't so they like delivered, they, they delivered they what they said exactly it would be. and unfortunately this person didn't do any research and <clears throat> thought it looked pretty and go oh, four thousand for a two care that's a good deal well obviously it was horrible but it's terrible what did she bring it in for just to get it she wanted to get an idea on what i thought of it and she wasn't too thrilled when i wasn't mad at me but yeah it was just it was bad but we uh, and then i see that a lot from online purchases but you don't see a lot of people mm. um oh let's see somebody uh, saying something ben gelber how are you ben Thanks for watching. And Rocky Johnson. Oh, that, was, oh, that yeah. wasn't... Uh, okay. Oh, they're just watching. Oh, uh, yes. Um, so when you have somebody bring in something they bought online, what is it they're looking for? They're looking for validation that they made a good purchase? Yes. And how many times do you look at it and go, like, that's not really... Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Uh, I mean, I've seen some good ones. But uh, more times than not, it is not a good purchase. Has anyone ever been like completely ripped off where 
Oh, yeah, I see it plenty. You there was a, it, it, the other big thing, other than online, is buying your jewelry when you're on a cruise. Oh, so man. you go to St. Thomas or wherever you go, and you go into the jewelry store where the guy's never going to see you ever again, and you are trusting him with this purchase. He's out of the country, and um, although I'm not sure, St. Thomas... I think the, that still counts as like the U.S. Yeah. But w say you're in St. Martin, that is not in the U.S. That is French and Dutch. So yeah, you're um, out of luck if if the store decides they don't want to do anything because you know you can't sue them, can't do anything. They're out of uh, the U.S. jurisdiction, and you're at their mercy that they sold you what you were supposed to get. Well, you have to know what you're looking at, right? So to the untrained yeah, it's eye, very it's very difficult to do. And um, I've seen a lot of terrible deals. That would be my worry as a consumer is to buy something, especially when it comes to diamonds. Like, you have to know what you're looking for in, in, in cut and, you know, clarity and all that. But if you don't know, once you get in your hands, you still can't tell until you actually have a jeweler's loop, right, to actually see what you've got. Correct on a lot of them, but... Um you know, you can get with a GIA certificate, so the diamond is certified, but then there's more to it f than just the color and clarity. You know, how well is it cut? You know, is the stone really deep? Is it cut poorly where it's not sparkling as much? Because the better a diamond is cut from the raw rock to what you see that gets put into a ring, the more the diamond will sparkle. And... Um, for example, Hearts on Fire made their name on how well they cut a diamond because they cut their diamonds finer than anybody else in the world, and therefore they sparkle more. Uh, so that's very important. There's another thing called fluorescence, uh, which if you have strong blue fluorescence on a diamond, um, that drops the value of it as well. Oh, it takes it down. It takes it down. That's bad. Because it's the it's more of a blue tint to it than it is. It has a bluish tint, and whenever you would go, like you probably go every night during mm -hmm. Halloween to the Haunted Hoochie. Am I correct? Oh, if not twice. All right. So if you're taking all your ladies to the Haunted Hoochie, yeah. and you're buying them diamonds every night to get them to go with you to the Haunted Hoochie, because that'd probably be the only way they go with you. Well, if you buy it online, you get the ticket to the Haunted Hoochie. But yes, oh, you know okay. Um, so... If it has fluorescence, the diamond glows in the black light. So I will get people in that's, you know, my fiance got me this, whatever, and go, I went and do the haunted hoochie, and my diamond was glowing. Is it like radioactive? What's going on? It freaks people out. And I go, no, 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 it's not going to, you know, harm you, but it has a strong blue fluorescence, and I explain it to them. And some the women got. I don't want a stone that glows in the dark. <laughs> That's just not what I want when it hits the black light. So uh, that's another thing that, you know, if you're doing it online you know, and you don't know what you're looking for, those are two very important things. But that's one of the reasons you guys never did online. Uh, we still, yes, do not do online purchasing. You know, maybe one day, just because I do see the popularity of it, but in the diamond world, um, and jewelry in general, people kind of want to touch and feel still. They want to ask questions. You know, they want to know what they're spending a lot of money on. Right. Uh, whether they're getting a good purchase. Um, and then there's still plenty that don't. Uh, but if I remember, I saw an article that said of all the jewelry sales across the United States... Only 4% are online. Of total sales. So total sales. Pandora or something could like that. could be anything. Jewelry. Yeah, all jewelry, 4% were online. Which, to me, sounds small. I don't know what other industries are. Oh, there's no way it could be. I mean, in retail sales, you have to think about the Amazons of the world. That I mean, really, i got to imagine it's a lot bigger than a lot of other industries. Well, yeah, I mean, I just, a lot higher. I just did some <clears throat> grocery shopping online where it, I just had it shipped to my house instead of going to get one thing it was you could buy kind of like a bundle of it why bother making that trip but when it comes to jewelry i mean that's those are some of the most expensive purchases you make especially when it comes to diamonds and, and a necklaces. personal item like an engagement ring that could potentially be 
It wasn't in your case, but it could potentially be handed down in the family. Listen, from, from, I may not have it anymore, but someone has possession of it. It was in court documents that she could keep it. Correct. So in that I case, get it from you. Well, well, Scott, really, Scott. If it was from me, I would have put the mojo to maybe get it to work. Yeah. Although maybe that nothing would have helped. Yeah, because you, you're the you're the factor that messed it all up. It was I went through Scott, and yep. that's why it didn't work out. That was it. My mojo would get that. She would never want to leave you. She'd think, you know. In fact, when I look at you, and speaking of mojo, I think of Austin Powers. <laughs> you know how he? Do you remember that one uh, episode? Uh, yeah. The one movie where he lost his mojo. Yeah. That was me for a while. You remind me of a person that was in that show. <laughs> I, I know exactly where he's going. You're so full of compliments to that. Yes, I am. <laughs> it must be because you're all excited about that. I'm excited for tomorrow night. I can't wait. And Good. hopefully I am going to be able to sit where I was promised last year that I didn't get to sit, Wait. and hopefully I will be this year. Listen, we got to go to break, but I'm going to let you tell the story because I want to defend myself There's no defending. This. We're going to we're gonna go to break right now. You're listening to the Myers Jewelers Experience. And then we'll just come right back with it. So you, yeah, you, we're you, coming right back, you, Rachel. Coming right back. Right back. So you're going to, a, going to a shindig tomorrow. Yeah. Yep, Britt Floyd. Oh, yeah. You sit around and get stoned to Brit Floyd, don't you? <laughs> bring no. his, bring his back so he can finish this. And get stoned. Ready? But I have watched Brit Floyd on uh, PBS. Yes, they're oh, good. They are good. That guitar work, oh my goodness. Can't wait. Here we go. Hey, welcome back to the Myers Jewelers Experience. I am Jeff, and this is Austin Bowers <laughs> on my right. You know... I was going to get into this. You had brought up before we went to break about your excitement about the show you're going to see, which is tomorrow Brit night. Floyd. Well, t you know what? If you're listening to this now, it's tomorrow night. If you're listening to this on Sunday, it was two nights ago on Friday night. So I think, just to clarify, I think we should let people know. I think people know that we get along. We've known each other. We do. Years, yes. 20 years. We're always. I'm joking, yeah, by the way, in case people time. don't know that. But I want to let people know. How meticulous you are about something you want. <laughs> Where you called me on Saturday night to remind me about tickets for this show. Yes, Mike is being kind enough to get me yeah. tickets and for one of my favorite bands, and it's yeah. called Brit Floyd. Anybody out there ever heard of them? You know how great they are. They are a Pink Floyd tribute band, and they are literally like watching Pink Floyd. Now, I will say that Jeff is right to say that something got messed up last year, so he did not get to sit where he wanted and called me from that show to let me know how unhappy he was. Yes, I did. So a full year later, he is going, and he's getting exactly what he wants, but he is calling me every day to remind me to check on those tickets. Every day. So Yeah. And, and so and has, <laughs> live while we are on the air. Yes. Are my so tickets okay? Your tickets are more than okay. And You're I thought this shape. was the time to bring it up because now all of Columbus, the nine people, we've got more listeners. Oh, we're up to nine. So all nine of you are going to witness. If not, there's going to be some big problems. Right. There will be hell to pay if it doesn't come through. But this also, I, I want a public apology when it works out for my seven straight days of phone calls. Okay, I give you that. Okay, on the radio. I will be more than happy to. Okay. And if not, we're going to have a fun time next show. Yeah. <laughs> I can't Might wait not that. be a next show. I can't, yeah, I can't wait for that. But before, Okay, so we've covered that. Yes. But I want to talk about, again, we were talking about online purchasing um, and the reason why you want to actually see and touch and feel these and items. if anybody's never seen Brit Floyd and you're out there <laughs> watching right now go they are awesome PBS has been running their shows they do a thing from live at Red Rock in uh, just outside of Denver and it is spectacular I've seen them I counted back this will be my eighth show seeing uh, Brit Floyd doesn't match my 93 Springsteen shows nope. but um, they truly are spectacular, especially if you enjoy the music of Pink Floyd, which I do, and I am very excited for tomorrow night. You know what's funny? Back to the uh, I, online I was I was having this conversation at another radio station that we were at this morning Whoa. on a morning show when the host says to me, 
I see Jeff's show on Instagram. I see all those clips. It looks like he has fun. And what I said was, and he never sticks to the topic. So once again, you <laughs> can we just finish that with online? Yeah, let's go back. Online, um... Yeah. I was just going to say online dating, but we're not doing online dating here. Not this show. No. Um, you probably should look into it, but <laughs> we can go some another time. So so to get back to the online purchasing, one yes. of the things that, that I we've talked about is the emotions of buying jewelry. Oh, uh, yes. Especially it is emotional purchase. Diamonds. Yes. And I was actually, I've actually been in the store when someone proposed right there. Yes. I remember that. That was great. Yeah, that was totally, uh, I think we had like a two or three hour event. Yeah, we had an event and this person, we were giving away an engagement ring. Yeah. And uh, a young guy won it. I don't know, he was had to be early 20s. Yeah. And he was with his girl and, you know, had no intentions of doing anything. He won it, got the ring, turned right around, got on his knee in front of everybody and proposed in front of, I don't know, maybe 100 people there. Yeah. And that was pretty cool. I remember turning my back for a second, though, because I was talking to Tracy. And then the next thing I know, everyone's like, oh, I can't believe. And I was like, what is going on? But that was the emotions overcame him, and that's what he wanted to do. But again, he got to see, touch, and feel it, which is the that most important That was an emotional, part. yeah, purchase situation. Also, speaking of emotional things, yes. I would like to congratulate one of our employees, who goes by the name of Haley, who just a little while ago gave birth to a beautiful little girl. Nice. So congratulations, congratulations to Haley and Michael. Mm -hmm. And um, I can't wait to go coochie coochie coo. Yeah. That's even <laughs> that's even if he's not with her. Um, so yes, congratulations on the baby. You should have brought the baby news up first, I think. I should have, but I just thought of it. But we're we're still on emotions. Yes. So uh, when it comes to buying diamonds and, and the, uh, that emotional state, it's not just when you're giving her the ring. It is the emotion she feels when her friends see it, right? Because we there's that commercial that used to run, the girls' night out. Yes, we had a girls' night out there all together. But I'll give you a good ex um, example of emotional uh, dealing with jewelry, emotions and jewelry. Had a customer in there today. Um, she had a ring that was her grandmother's. The ring, she said, was approximately 80, 80 years old. And a nice diamond ring. Uh, and uh, the top of it were, there were like eight diamonds in it. Were just It was just worn out. 80 years of wear and tear. So we are going to refurbish it and rebuild it it's going to stay looking the exact same there won't be any look difference except the prongs and everything are all going to be brand new i'm building a whole new plate to hold the stones and she can wear that ring now with confidence that she will not lose stones uh and you know hopefully at 80 years from now one of her grandkids or whatever will be um doing the same things, going into a store and wanting to refurbish it. So the jewelry continues to pass. The ring I'm wearing was my father's. He wore this ring for at least 50 years that I know of. And uh, Is that the one that's in the picture? In that's the in the picture that's hanging in the store. Yep, same thing. And I will one day give this to one of my kids and their kids. And this ring hopefully will make it for hundreds of years. So it's kind of a cool thing. But again, uh, jewelry does evoke emotion. When you're giving Correct. it to somebody, when someone sees it, when it's passed down, that's what I think is cool about that story of that mm. woman bringing that ring in. When she came in, did she give you the whole backstory on it? She did not. Um, she, they were actually there, her and her other two sisters with her father. Her father was buying an anniversary gift for the mother. Oh, okay. Um, so, uh, and again, you know, I think it was a 50th wedding anniversary, or maybe it was a six, excuse me, 60th. And, uh, yeah, just another emotional purchase there, you know, married 60 years and uh, getting a uh, beautiful piece of jewelry for the gift that, again, will, and it was a hearts on fire item. And again, that is something that will, I'm sure, stay in their family and keep on passing down for generations. So it's a, um, uh, 
it's a great purchase when it comes to something like that. And do you really want to buy something like that online without ever seeing, <coughs> excuse me, without ever seeing it? Well, I also think about the story behind it that it lasts that long. The last thing you want is, yeah, I got this on the Kohl's.com, and I, I want you to pass it on to your children. It, right. th there is a story behind that piece of jewelry Correct. as it's moving down the line. And I, I'm not mocking you, but I'm just thinking if I got that on Amazon, that story would be like, yeah, I got it when it was Prime Tuesday. <laughs> you know, it's not the same. No, and the, the guys, they come in, they look at the diamonds. I mean, they'll spend an hour or two hours really studying it, going over I mean, looking through five or six or ten stones and picking the one that feels right to them that they think their fiancé is going to love. You can't do all that online. Right. So you, uh, you lose an awful lot in the purchase and price points. You're not going to save all that much. Right. And you got a brick and mortar store to go to. For example, to us, we're the owners. We're there. You got a problem. You see me. You see my brother. We'll make sure it's correct. We'll make sure it's right. So you will not have a problem. How are you going to go back online to the guy in Tokyo who sold you this uh, ring that fell apart on you? Or that will only give you like a partial credit. Right. So, um, you know, there's a lot that goes into it on why you would want to purchase from a brick and mortar store at least for something like jewelry right i think we pulled it off this week we yeah did, we, we did not take the most circuitous route to get there but we did well we did not but we found our way yeah well sign us off and i'm gonna week. find my way tomorrow night to brit floyd and i'm gonna get one less phone call a week it's gonna be yes fantastic. all right well everybody experience myers jewelers and thank you for listening have a great rest of the day